I'm gonna go out and pick up some Cali speakers. Cali who? Not Kelly, Cali. Oh, a farm girl. Not a girl, speakers. She doesn't speak English. I would like to meet her. I'm sitting here today with the Cali MM6, and as you can see, this is not a small speaker, and it's got a whole bunch of options on the back. Dip switches, RCA input, balanced input from the uh, primary speaker, if you want to make this a slave of the first, or they can both be primaries, and um, a power switch. Oh, and it comes with remote control and an optical input as well. But they're not your standard desktop speakers because they're big. So these are expected to be in your home. But are they home speakers? Let's find out. So the Callies are eight and three quarter inches wide, 14 and an eighth inches high, and 10 and a quarter inches deep. They weigh 15 and a half pounds, and they have an RCA input, optical input, and SPDIF input. But beware, the remote does not work with the RCA inputs. It only works with the digital inputs. It's truly hard to love this remote because on the one hand, not many powered speakers come with remote controls, so that's cool. But you can do volume up, volume down, and mute, but you can only do it on the digital inputs. So hook up a turntable or anything else with RCA inputs, and you're done. The other issue with the remote is that it's infrared. So if you do have three or four or five of these, because say you wanted to create some kind of home theater system out of them, uh, one remote's not gonna do it even if you set them all up with digital inputs. So not in love with it. It's nice that it's there. And it might be great if you just run these in a pair mode using digital input on your desktop, but they're big. They're not really desktop speakers. So I think these are kind of limited. And I think before we get to the sound measurements, we need to discuss the marketing of these guys. I really don't know where Cali is going with these in terms of marketing because they're trying to get off the desktop and into, say, a media room. That's what the Mammoth series is about. But you need a power outlet. So you're running power cables. So you can't put them too far inside the room because you'd be running power cables all the way to the edges. Beautiful thing about speakers, passive speakers, is that you can kind of hide speaker wire in a lot of ways. You can run it under carpeting, you can run it around walls and then just bring it over when you need it. But with a big power cable, and especially with these, they only give you six footers, so you could go out and buy giant power cables running long distances. Uh, doesn't really work for me. So we're still looking at some kind of desktop setup, but they're too big for a desktop setup. They're just big speakers. You would need a mammoth old uh, 1930s style desk where the giant you know, bad guy sits behind it and the little guy sits on the other side and maybe that would be perfect for these speakers, but not many people have giant desks like that anymore. So now we're looking at a very small market of people who probably have a need for speakers of this size because you're not gonna put them behind your home theater screen, at least not and try to use the remote. Um, so you control them with your own amp well, no, you won't because now you don't use an amp because they're powered. So you're going to be running them off your preamp or your desktop. And just I don't think a lot of people have this particular setup. So for the people who want them, for the people who think I could use a larger desktop system or I do have space in my room, I have a, I don't know, 12 foot wide room. I can easily put these exactly where I want. I can easily run power to them. For those people, for people who have a need for these speakers, let's look at the measurements. Let me note with these measurements that they are done in room stereo pair. These are not near field measurements. These are two meters away. And I think for $409 for a pair, this is amazing measurements that you're getting at these levels. The purple line is 80 decibels, teal or green, um, 85, 
blue 90 and gold 95 dB. The only issue I truly have with these speakers is at around 95 dB, you're starting to get distortion to come in near the level of the music. We'll take a look at that as well. So I'm looking right at the distortion because we already looked at the other measurements and at 80 dB, very well controlled. Yes, there's an issue down below 40, but reality is that you should be sending everything to a sub. At 85, still well controlled distortion. At 90, it's not too bad. At 95, we start having issues, but let me repeat. These are at two meters, not at one meter. So you go to a lot of websites, they'll tell you what the distortion is and what the sensitivity of a speaker is. Everything's done at one meter. I'm doing these at two meters. So 95 dB is really 98 dB if you're at one meter. And if you're putting these onto your desktop, well, if you have a big desk, you might not even be half a meter away from these things. It might be like a foot and a half, two feet away. And all of a sudden, now we're talking about breaking 100 decibels before you start even looking at these kinds of distortion levels. So stunning for a $409 pair of speakers with 240 watt amps built into each. And I would strongly recommend that whoever designed these keep designing them like this um, because these are quite good. A little few issues, yeah, with the remote, few issues with the inputs, the RCA uh, doesn't handle the remote, at least even not even for muting, which kind of threw me for a loop. But figure you could at least mute on the RCA, but you can't. But that's really more of a conclusion than anything else. Um, these speakers rock, but I'm only looking at measurements. Now it's time to actually listen. So of course I spent 600 hours listening to the great Diane Bish, but I found out that a lot of you people don't listen to Diane Bish, so you don't really have a reference. So when I say this thing can handle Bish, you don't really know what that means. So I actually, yes I did, I started listening to something different. And this is what I listened to. So the Nun's Hymn, you gotta be familiar with this bad boy. And this thing rocks, okay? The Callies take the Nun's Hymn and bam! You think it's like a priest's hymn. I mean, it really rocks you to your core. It just brings you right into the element. So I know a lot of you don't listen to Diane Bish, but boy, listen to Nun's Hymn. And I got more. Yanahana blew me away. If you want to know what a speaker can do on mid-range and you want to hear vocals, you're not going to beat this one. So again, I was floored. These Callies are pretty good. So listening, fantastic. Measurements, fantastic. But there are other issues with the speaker. And now it's time for a wine test. So here they are next to a 2020 Cabernet Sauvignon from California Regency Collection. And I have to say, they kind of hold their own. They're, they're like a nice VW Passat. They're not quite Mercedes. They're not quite Audi, but they're middle of the road. They're not ugly. They hold their own. So on our wine test, they modestly don't pass. So with our ratings chart in full view, you're all going to be waiting for it. And yes, it's going to get a red. It's going to get a Syrah. And that's pretty impressive from a $409 pair of speakers. Hi, Kali. Not Kali. It's an inanimate object. It doesn't understand you. Right, you said she doesn't speak English. <laughs>